Rush was interested in psychiatry before he had a son with mental illness. He had devoted much of his life um, because he thought it was important medically. In the 1780s, he started writing about the importance of viewing mental illness and addiction as medical diseases, which they were not before. And this is really the beginning in the world of us starting to think about them this way. He forced Pennsylvania Hospital to modernize the way they treated people with mental illness. What mental health treatment looked like in the 1700s into the 1780s and 1790s was people were put in a room, they were chained to the floor, they slept on straw on the floor. It was believed that people with mental illness were impervious to heat or cold, so they did not heat the rooms in the winter. One of the first things Rush had to force the hospital to do was actually put heaters in the rooms where the people with mental illness were being treated. Some patients are treatment resistant and some aren't. So they use, the, the idea that they use the treatments of the day, which included bloodletting, which included purging, which included a number of other uh, medical treatments and the beginnings of psychotherapy, the beginnings of talk therapy. Just the idea that you would talk to people with mental illness, you would listen to what they were saying, try to figure out what it meant. They also did early occupational therapy. So work therapy, they could work in the garden in Pennsylvania Hospital, do other things like that. This was a revolutionary thing. So as Rush's ideas about how the brain worked changed, he, for example, created a chair that would spin somebody around with the thought that more blood to the brain would help these illnesses. Again, rudimentary understanding of what these illnesses are. But you know, what's interesting is we today do PET scans to show blood flow to the brain. Some people were treated successfully, other people lived their whole lives there. Our Pennsylvania Hospital, the first hospital in America, was a hospital for the poor. The only non-poor people in Pennsylvania Hospital were mentally ill because everybody else was treated at home. And then, out of nowhere, while this was all happening, two things happened. His best friend, John Adams' son, is falling deeper and deeper into alcoholism. And when he dies, Adams is, is decimated. Several years later, Rush's son, who had some behavioral problems, but I don't think they would have thought was mentally ill, clearly started showing signs of mental illness while he was a Navy surgeon, especially after he shot and killed his best friend in a duel on board. And after that, he became very psychotic, he had many suicide attempts, and we actually have all the correspondence back and forth between the Navy and Rush, trying to figure out what was wrong with him, what they should do about him, and they finally reluctantly send him home, and he becomes his father's most famous patient. And John Rush, who originally was to take over Rush's practice, he was a doctor, uh, ended up being a patient at Pennsylvania Hospital for over 30 years. He came there in his early 30s and died there in his 60s. The book is Rush, Revolution, Madness, and the Visionary Doctor Who Became a Founding Father. I'm Stephen Freed, thanks for watching.